Hello everyone, I'm Shan Ying. I'm from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Today I want to share you some work we have done in the last few years. The title, yeah, yeah, just like this. And uh, I, uh, why I choose this title? I think, you know, the answer must be true. The green infrastructures actually could uh, and, and naturate, uh, urban air pollution. So that's why we are gathering here today. But what's the more important is how we can prove this and make it better. Now, so this is uh, first air pollution. I want to talk about PM 2.5 and uh, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAH, as the typical air pollutants in the city. They are mainly man made pollutants, very stable and measured long distance with harmful effects to urban residents. Urban uh, air pollutants could deposit from the air to plant, soil, and water by dry and white depositions, and sometimes back to the air by resuspension and release. The vegetation of plants could play an important role in the biogeochemical cycling. The dry deposition on leaves and abs absorptions are the key roles to remove air pollution. So what's the main influence of factors between air pollutants and vegetation? A study can quote four aspects. Let's see that, including tree species, pollutants, meteorological factors, and plant community. If we look at, uh, we could say tree species actually means functional trees of, uh, of trees and leaves, which we could call this internal factors. And the pollutants and the Meteorological factors are external conditions. These two interact with each other at the surface of leaves and branches, and also with a well-designed plant community. That's how we could have a cleaner city and human well-being. So as I said, the questions are concerned. We concerned about the urban forest and air pollutants should be seen from different scales and have different questions. In the internal and external factors in the first scale, we focus on the leaf and tree species. The question is, which tree species has better capacity to remove air pollutants? And the second scale, we focus about the plant uh, community. What are the effects of landscape design on pollutants removal. And the third scale, we should look at the whole urban area, how to plan land use types to help improve urban air quality. So let's start with the first scale, what happened in trees and leaves? There are also two questions we would like to answer. So how do leaves absorb aerial particles and which tree species should be selected. Uh, in our study, we choose 14 typical tree species in Shanghai with four conifers and 10 broad-leaved. Leaves and branches are both sampled. We use a wind tunnel method and a smoke chamber method to determine the PM2.5 dry deposition velocity on leaves and branches. And a 3D X-ray microscope is used to observe where are the particulate matters on the surface and in the leaves. So let's answer the first question. How do leaves absorb particles? As the figure shows, the co uh, coagulation effect happened on the leaves, which means small particles combined and accumulate into large size particles. And that helps leaves to absorb or fix more particles in the air. And from the right finger, the functional trees of leaves, we found that the single leaf area specific leaf weight and the surface free energy were the main influence factors of particles deposit on leaves. For the question two, which tree species should be selected? This is the PM2.5 dry deposition velocity of uh, uh, 14 tree species in Shanghai. We could see 
the conifer trees usually had a higher capacity than broadleaf trees. But it does not mean these trees are suitable everywhere and every time. I mean, the leaf areas of uh, conifers are less than broadleaf trees. So these results just provide an alternative for tree species selection. Uh, just as Wendy said before, right species in right places. And uh, the second scale is from what we could see and use. There are different landscape design, but what is a good design which could be beneficial to air pollution removal? That's what we want to answer in this part. We are looking at the green space along an urban avenue. We sampled and test the PM concentration in the green space and outside it. The results show that the concentration in and over the green space were actually lower compared to the roadside. The right finger showed that the larger the canopy density is, the more noticeable particle purification will be. But you know, the trees would grow, they need space to grow. So if you plant the trees in a very high density, they will die in future. So uh, uh, we think the best canopy density should not too low or too high. The best uh, range should be 70% uh, to 85% uh, for the particles removal. And based on what we found in last slide, we tried to make some landscape design of a uh, urban green space along the road in uh, 300 square meters green space, there should be 10 to 12 trees, 20 large shrubs, and 50 small shrubs. The ratio of trees, large shrub, and small shrubs should be one to two to five. The structure of vegetation could achieve the canopy density 70% and the shell belt porosity 30%. So the third scale, uh, the third scale is the scale of the whole urban area, like what I showed before. If we know how the air pollution distributed, then what we could do on urban forestry planning and design. So we take Shanghai's aero PAH pollution as an example. We sampled for, uh, 84 sites all over Shanghai, determining the PAH concentrations and also recorded the land use type of every simple site in different buffers. Water, road, farmland, residential, grassland, business, and woodland. The reach of each land use type was calculated and associated with the pollutant concentrations. We would like to answer two questions here. One, which land use types are the main source of PAH and which ones are main sinks? The second, could more green space and waters factually improve the urban air quality? This is the PAH distribution. The distribution showed that the PAH concentrations is higher in urban area than suburban and rural area. For the distance and the population graded, the pH concentration decreased with the distance getting further from the city center. But the pH concentration positively correlated with the population density, as the right finger showed. The results implied that the humans' activities were the main source of pH in urban areas. And it's very funny that the housing price in Shanghai is very expensive, you know, especially in urban area. It seems that people who live in the city center must be very rich, but they have to suffer with serious air pollution. And uh, the relationship between land use type and the pH concentration 
would also prove what I said. We could see from the left finger, the right circles are positively related, which means these land use types are the source of PAHS, while the blue circles are negatively related. So they are the sink of PAH, or they could absorb PAH. So we could say the road, industry, residential, and business areas are the source. Humans' activities resulted to higher air pollution. However, the woodland, water, and farmland are the sinks of pH. But the influential range are also different. The pH emissions from the road, residential, and business are mainly high molecular weight compounds, such as cooking, traffic emissions, had a very long migration distance. But wood and waters would absorb the pH very nearby. They seem to be a very effective ways to improve air quality. Uh, so I would like to conclude myself here. The green infrastructures, including urban forest, farmland, waters, can effectively ele ele elevate urban air pollution. We have to balance the land use type using more green infrastructures to make the city cleaner. So for the future research, I think, you know, the critical zone research is very popular here in the right time. And I think the urban forestry links all the urban critical zone elements, and we should uh, look very careful about it in future. So that's my talk today. Thank you so much.